Good morning. Right. Crazy, these markets over the last uh, few days. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Beginning of July, I thought it would be the beginning of the summer and things would be a little bit quieter, especially with the non-farm payroll release on Friday. But that is not the case. Everything is all over the place. Right. What have we got? I've been talking about gold going lower for, for a long, long, long time. In fact, as long as I can remember, I've been saying gold will go down, gold will go down. Now, I talked about this being a bear flag here in gold and eventually we would break lower. That's worked. Uh, selling at resistance levels has worked. Uh, and yesterday we had a re selling, resistance at, uh, re selling resi at resistance of 1811, 1815. I think yesterday's high was just above 1811. It was 1812. So really hope you got a short position on. I didn't predict a big move to the downside yesterday. I just, as I say, I wasn't, you know, didn't expect, we hadn't had a big move for a while. So I was quite happy to take profit maybe at 1800. But I did say that a break below 1797 would trigger further losses. Anyway, We've got down as far as 17.63. As I say, I think it's just the beginning. I'm just glancing at the weekly chart. I'm not going to show you. We've got a 78.6% fib at 17.66. I don't think that's going to hold it. I think you know gold is in a bear trend. There's your there's your bear flag, and that and that should trigger further moves to the downside. Silver also. I talked about silver going lower. It's certainly done that. We're in a bear trend. Not a surprise. We we, we had some sell levels earlier. Um, in the week and at the end of last week, and that certainly worked well. We broke below the 200 day moving, uh, 200 week moving average, which was at 2045. That was another sell signal. So that's all going well. Um, oil, well, um, I didn't put any trades on uh, on the oil spreadsheet. I don't really trade oil myself. That's why, but we'll just have a quick look at it. Look, we've broken below the 100 uh, day moving average. That's the first time oil has been as closed below the 100 day moving average all of this year. So that's a very significant point. And not only did it close below it, but it really did plunge and it plunged below. I could argue this is a head and shoulders, but I'm not going to because it should really be above this peak here. But anyway, probably someone's telling you it is. I don't believe it is, but that doesn't. But I still believe that that's enough that, you know, I still think that oil will probably start, will probably continue to go lower now. So a negative day for the commodities. Now, this is interesting. Uh, dollar index. I thought that we had a top. It looked like we had a double top, a fairly small double top, but uh, it looked pretty obvious to me. We've broken higher. Now, this is very important. If you're a subscriber or even if you've been watching my weekend webinars, uh, you will know that the dollar index has an incredibly important 38.2% Fibonacci uh, resistance level at 106.61. Now, I didn't know if we'd get there because it looked like we were building some negative patterns at around 105.80. However, we've broken higher. Where have we got to? 106.80. So we overran it a little bit. 20 pips is nothing. Uh, we're trading at 106.53 now. So we're trading a bit below it. It's really important. I'm not suggesting you jump into a short position in the dollar yet. I would want to see some sort of pattern, some sort of indication that we have peaked. Uh, there is a very strong chance that we will peak. But this massive green candle yesterday with no pullback doesn't make me want to sell into a market which has been in a bull trend since, well, certainly 2021, uh, beginning of 2021. So we, we, we're in well, a certainly a year long bear trend, probably I could argue a bit longer. I mean, in the longer term, actually, we've been going up since 2009. Uh, but, you know, just in the short term, I can show you that here. Um, so, yeah, you know, we, th we've had consolidation phases, but we have been going up since 2009. Anyway, right. So I'm going to wait and see how things develop. I'm not going to jump into a short position yet, but I've just got my, got my radar out there looking for potential negative signals. Now, having said that, of course, the euro US dollar broke lower. We had that support around 103.50, which had been working so well. Potential double bottom, potential triple bottom when we retested it. I did warn you that triple bottoms rarely hold. They're a really very rare pattern. In this case, it didn't hold. The break below 103.50 or 103.25, as I put in my reports, was the sell signal. Now we dropped nearly another 100 pips from 103.25. If you manage to drop, jump into a short position, that looks quite good. Obviously, we do have some resistance now at 103.50 um, if we see any bounce at all. Um, so again, um, there's, there's no support here for the euro, uh, US dollar. The only reason I think that we could bounce is because I've seen uh, the Fibonacci resistance level on the dollar index. But for now, I'm going to say that the outlook for the euro versus the US dollar remains negative. Big resistance at 103.50, 103.70. We would have to close the week above there on Friday for me to reverse my view. Then I could say, well, we've, you know, we've got a nice bounce on the week and maybe closed unchanged. Anyway, jumping the gun. Let's not worry about that. For now, as long as we stay below 103.50, 103.70, it's negative for the euro versus the US dollar. Now, Canadian dollar. 
We broke up through resistance at 129.10, 129.30 yesterday and absolutely soared. Now look, we've got this, um, this trend line that goes all the way back to 2021, August of 2021. So it's a, two, it's a one year trend line. It's um, been tested many times. It's very significant. Tested again yesterday. Look at this candle. Just two weeks of losses taken out in a matter of hours. Um, but we, got, we, we went straight to the resistance at 103.30, uh, 130.60, 130.80. Now, stops needs, uh, we need stops above 131.00. If we were to break above that level, obviously it would be positive because it's a very strong trend line. And I can show you on the weekly chart that it really is a very important level on the weekly chart too. In fact, it's a fib level. <clears throat> it's a 200 week moving average. There's a lot going on around 130.60. Okay, red 200 week moving average, previous swing highs, lots of Fibonacci resistance there. This is incredibly important. So it is a strong resistance level. Um, but as I say, we start breaking about 131 and close above there tonight, then that would be a really strong buy signal. We could see another 200 point rally quite quickly in that pair. Uh, so it's all to play for. This is a key level. Uh, I guess the idea is you sell into resistance with a tight stop and then be prepared to reverse into the opposite position, in other words, into a long position to take advantage of the breakout. You've got to be nimble. You've got to have your eye on the ball. Okay, dollar yen, you look at the daily chart, you can see this is probably a consolidation. We just seem to be moving sideways. There's no particular sell signals um, and we haven't hit a strong resistance level. But then you go and look at the hourly chart and you see something of a head and shoulders pattern. Potential head, uh, sorry, potential left shoulder, head, right shoulder, neckline, bang on the 200 hour moving average, which is around 135.00. There's your neckline trend line here, which is around 134.95. And for good measure, we've even got a 38.2% Fibonacci support at 134.90. So in the report, I've got 135.00, 134.80 as the important support level. We don't know if it's a head and shoulders pattern. We would at least have to break the neckline for that to be the case. Might hold here. We might continue sideways. So again, you know, try the support level, break below 134.60, would, would, we would want to reverse. I would imagine into a short position and see if we hold below 135.00. Uh, uh, so stops would have to be above 135.20 if you then reverse into the short. If you've got any questions on that, let me know. I'm trying to just whiz through everything, make sure I get all the information out there. Euro yen held the support level at around 130, uh, 139.70.50 uh, on the Friday, and then we recovered. And then we plunge through it now. So 139.50, 139.70 is our resistance level for today. Looks like we've already had a high for the day there and we're heading lower. So this does look negative for the euro versus the yen. Well, you already know that the euro dollar broke lower. So I feel I've got, got quite a negative outlook for the euro in that pair. But I've also got a negative outlook for the euro versus the yen. And as you know, I think the yen could go higher anyway. So we'll see. Obviously, if, if uh, the euro, sorry, if the dollar yen breaks below 134.80, that would clearly send this pair significantly lower. And really, we could easily get as far as 137.00, 136.80. Okay, Euro CAD has been in a bear trend for a long time. Let's have a look at it on the weekly chart. Euro CAD, there we go. Let's call it a bear trend from the beginning of uh, the third month into 2020. So two and, a, two and a half year bear trend. Now, I wasn't sure what was going on here. But we really, oh, let's go back to the daily chart. We had a lot of base building going on around 134.00, 133.80. One, two, three, four, five times it hit that level. So I didn't know if that was going to be a, a base pattern or a continuation pattern. Well, it turns out it looks like it's a continuation pattern. I'm not sure if I can call it a flag. We really have traded within two very um, parallel lines, very parallel uh, horizontal lines, but we broke lower. Now we've bounced back to 133.80, 134.00. Obviously, if we hold below there, it's going to be a sell signal. And considering how long we went sideways for, this could be a big move to the downside, 200, 300 pips. So you need to stop above 134.25, I would suggest, on a short position. If you did try a long position yesterday, don't worry, it was still worth it. We could have bounced off there. But for now, you know, it's one of those situations where we've broken an important support level that becomes a resistance. And therefore, we have to reverse into a short position, I believe. And I think a stop at about 134.25 gives us enough leeway if you did manage to sell on the bounce yesterday to 133.80, 134.00. Very, very small risk. And if I'm right, we could see 100, 200 or even 300 pips profit on a short position now. We did get stopped on some trades yesterday, but of course the stops are always very tight, usually around 30 pips. When the, when the winners come, they, they do 
do us very well. Buying uh, the Euro Swiss at 96.0095.80 certainly worked this week. We even got a chance at the beginning of yesterday to do that. We are now 100 pips or, or so higher, and it looks like that can continue to go higher. I don't see any particular resistance, so if you are still long, that one's definitely working for you. I think that's it. Crypto still looks pretty negative, although it's only trading sideways. Stock markets are all over the place, but I still feel that eventually we can recover in the US stock markets, but it's going to be a real difficult thing to hold a long position because we'll go up a bit. It really is a two steps forward, uh, one step back, sometimes two steps back before we go up again. So that's going to be tough. We'll see if I'm right. Just looking at my uh, prices, do I need to show anything else? I don't think so. That's it. All right. Contact me if I can help you. Otherwise, we'll have a chat again soon.